Bonjour tout le monde. Hi, my name is Anne-Marie Croteau and I'm the Dean of the John Wilson School of Business. Bonjour, and I'm Murad Debabi, the Dean of the Gina Kodi School of Engineering and Computer Science. We would like to start by acknowledging that Concordia University is located on unceded indigenous land. The Gangnam Kehaka Nation is recognized as the custodians of the lands of waters and waters on which we gather today. Georgia Gay Montreal is historically known as a gathering place for many First Nations. Today, it's the home to a diverse population of indigenous and other peoples. We respect the continued connections with the past, present, and future in our ongoing relationships with indigenous and other peoples within the Montreal community. We are delighted to welcome you and emcee this event with three outstanding athletes who are here with us today. Mechanical engineering. <laughs> Our finance students with us at John Wilson School of Business, Pascal Dion, who won the gold medal for the 5,000 uh, short track speed skating. Félicitations. And our mechanical engineering student at the Gina Cody School and silver medalist in the para ice hockey event, Anton Jacobs Webb. Please pass on. Robert. And uh, our aerospace engineering student at the Gina Cody School and bronze medalist in the freestyle skiing mixed team aerials event, Marion Teno. Bravo. So, Anne-Marie, ce n'est pas tous les jours qu'on a une médaille de plus hein, par rapport à John Manson. Non. Mais nous, on a l'art. Oh. En tout cas, écoutez, nous sommes extrêmement fiers de vous avoir avec nous. Euh, on sent aussi fiers, non, je ne peux pas dire aussi fiers que vos parents parce que je suis sûre que les autres, c'est immense. Mais comme doyen, doyenne de nos écoles respectives, on est très heureux de vous avoir avec nous. Alors maintenant, j'aimerais inviter notre président, Graham Carr, à dire quelques mots. Merci Anne-Marie et bienvenue à toutes et à tous. Nous sommes très contents de vous recevoir en personne pour cette occasion joyeuse. And of course, it's great to welcome everybody who's uh, joining this event remotely as well. What a pleasure, what an honor it is to have our three student medalists, Olympic heroes with us uh, here today, uh, uh, Marion, Anton, Pascal. Uh, you know, when I graduate, I'm going to get, or when you graduate, I'm going to get to sign your diploma. I feel like I should be asking for your autograph uh, today. Oh. <laughs> and I think you know, if we just cast our minds back a, a couple of months ago, it, it's been a long, dark, tough winter in, uh, in Montreal and Quebec and Canada. And of course, we had the, the arrival of the Omicron wave of COVID uh, early in the new year, which was incredibly disruptive uh, um, for the university and for society as a whole. And uh, I can hardly begin to imagine how challenging and disruptive it was for you in terms of your preparations for, um, uh, for the summit of the, uh, of the Olympics and how to maintain high intensity training and just you know, concentrate in that very um, uh, unstable environment. But I wanted to just say that I think for, for many of us here at the university, across Quebec and across Canada, it was just absolutely fantastic, even at crazy hours of the day in Montreal, to have something special, uplifting, exciting to watch, uh, namely the outstanding performances that you and your teammates uh, uh, gave on behalf, of, uh, on, on behalf of Quebec and Canada. 
Donc, la célébration euh, aujourd'hui est notre façon de vous remercier pour cela et de vous dire l'immense fierté que nous procurent vos réalisations. Vous comptez désormais parmi un groupe exceptionnel d'étudiants et étudiantes de Concordia qui se sont démarqués en tant qu'athlète olympique et paralympique. The Olympics and the Paralympics represent an unbelievable summit of human sporting achievement. Mais les Jeux vous ont permis de briller non seulement grâce à vos talents physiques, mais aussi grâce à des qualités personnelles que nous valorisons en tant que société et que nous encourageons en tant que l'université. Concentration et dévouement, travail acharné et euh, pers persévérance, capacité à, à, à tirer des leçons, des échecs, à s'adapter, à, à se poursuivre les efforts jusqu'à la réussite et à parvenir à un degré de, de maître absolument sublime. It's a great journey, and if it's to be successful, it requires unbelievable strength of calendar, uh, character, determination, and talent. Keeping your nerves under pressure, balancing your nutrition, your sleep, managing the many, many demands on your time, uh, including the demands we're putting on you today, I suppose, And, you know, I, I think that only you as elite athletes can really understand what all of that means. Uh, and, and then add on to it the demands of being a un university student as well. And the fact that you've managed to successfully incorporate all of these demands is just unbelievably impressive and even more than that, inspiring. So on behalf of the entire Concordia community, I just want to simply say congratulations. You know, it's not just Canada. Honestly, the world right now needs people with the qualities that you've demonstrated. Uh, I know how proud I and all of us are that you've chosen Concordia to advance uh, uh, some of your incredible talents. Um, bon succès in everything more that's to come, whether it's, uh, whether it's uh, in future games or competitions, or certainly at the university and above all in life. And thank you. Thank you once more. Thank you so much, uh, President Carr. We both watched our athletes claim their medals halfway around the world. And I would like to personally thank you for giving everyone something to be excited about during the exams period. It's now <laughs> our honor to invite the to the stage uh, Concordia's newest student medalist. Uh, we have uh, Anton Marion Pascal. And we would like to go to the question period. Oui, on va faire ça. Alors, we're curious about your journey. As uh, our president said, you have achieved a lot. You are inspiring us for many good reasons. So we're curious about your journey. Um, I'm sure there's, uh, first, why did you choose that sport? So we'll ask you each one. And also, uh, what brought you to, to you know, as a top athlete as you are now? That's quite a lot. It's something to, to do the sport, but to say, I want to be an Olympian. That's another one. So uh, we're curious about your journey. So Pascal, puisque tu es mon étudiant, je commence avec toi. <laughs> je vais arrêter. Go ahead. C'est franglais. We'll do it the way you want. Um, J'ai d'abord commencé en, en patin artistique, fait que c'est c'est quand même proche un peu comme sport. Um, pour moi, c'est un, un sport qui bougeait pas tout à fait assez. J'avais beaucoup trop d'énergie sur la glace. Je faisais des allers-retours le plus vite possible. Fait que, évidemment, je faisais pas le bon sport. Fait que vers euh, vers l'âge de 6 ans, j'ai changé au patinage de vitesse. Qui était, euh, il y avait des cours de patinage de vitesse juste sur l'autre bord, sur un autre glace, euh, à côté où est-ce que je m'entraînais. 
Fait que j'ai regardé ça, j'ai vu un, un intérêt. À partir de là, j'ai commencé tranquillement, pas vite. Euh, j'ai commencé à m'entraîner de plus en plus. Puis vraiment, j'avais la piqûre pour le sport. J'ai adoré ça dès le début. Euh, évidemment, d'aller aux Olympiques, c'était un rêve. Mais, mais pas tant un objectif. Mes objectifs, j'ai tant eu des objectifs plus à court terme. J'ai toujours été euh, un petit peu plus réaliste sur mes objectifs. Je ne me, me suis jamais dit, ah, c'est sûr que je vais aller, je vais aller aux Jeux Olympiques. J'ai tant rêvé d'y aller, mais je ne pensais pas que c'était possible. Puis finalement, juste avec les années, euh, les années avançaient. Et finalement, j'ai vu que de plus en plus, ça, ça semblait possible. Puis euh, c'est ça, j'ai réussi à. Euh, à y être. <laughs> quelque chose. Merci beaucoup, Anton. Um, when uh, so I, I played, uh, I can play hockey. I, I'm a para athlete, uh, para hockey athlete. I can play hockey. I played hockey when I was a kid, and I could skate. But I, I quickly realized I would never make the, the NHL with with an artificial leg. So um, I think when I was 11 years old, I met a past player from the national team. Harvey Lord, he, he came to the person who makes my prosthetics, so he left a bunch of autographed pictures, team pictures, hockey cards for me, and um, he invited me out to try, that was, that was in Ottawa at the time, so he invited me out to, to try sledge hockey, and that's how I got started, and honestly, from, from when I met him, right, like that was, he was a Paralympian right there, he, he was on the national team, and so to make the national team was a huge goal for me, I, I made the national team in uh, 2018, right at the beginning of, of the quad, and then The Paralympics, like I've watched that forever, right? I watched, I watched Vancouver. I watched, I watched the, the national team. And I know all the guys. Like I was that guy going around and getting autographs from all the players. <laughs> I was that kid who I still have the gloves. I still have those gloves. So it's been quite a journey. It's been like a, a dream come true to finally be there. And of course, COVID has affected our journey the past year. Um, we weren't, usually we, we get to train, we do uh, training camps, so we, we travel because our team isn't centralized, so we, um, we travel say, say once a month, we go for a training camp, for a week long training camp, uh, we fly to Calgary, that's where the headquarters of Hockey Canada are, or, or Toronto or wherever there's a, a good setup, and uh, we haven't been able to do that, so we did training, uh, trub, sorry, sorry, um, training hubs, so we, we would just, Montreal, Montreal players would play together, Toronto players would play together, Calgary players would play together, and that really uh, affected our training, but then we actually, uh, a month before the games, we got into a bubble set up, so everybody flew to, to the Calgary, and we just, we were in a hotel for a month, kind of isolating, COVID tests every morning, but we got to get on the ice uh, twice a day for a month, and that really, really helped us before the games. Merci beaucoup, thank you. Marion. Non, mais pour ma part, j'étais une gymnaste toute mon enfance. La gymnastique, c'était ma vie, puis euh, je voulais aller aux Jeux Olympiques en gymnastique. Uh, when I was 17, I was recruited in aerials. Actually, I did something called RBC Training Ground. Uh, their premise is to find the next Canadian Olympians, and I was uh, identified for my acrobatic background and not my skiing skills, <laughs> just my acrobatic background. And I started aerials like this and I really liked it almost immediately. And um, I started training full time in 2017 and I made the national team in 2020. And when I started aerials, I realized that I could go to the Olympics in this sport, whereas it was not really realistic in gymnastics. So um, that's how I, I started. Et uh, dans les dernières années, mon premier circuit Coupe du Monde était la saison passée. Donc, uh, je n'avais pas vraiment uh, d'attente uh, précise. Je ne savais vraiment pas à quoi m'attendre uh, puisque je ne l'avais jamais fait. Puis, je n'avais jamais compétitionné à ce niveau-là aussi. Il uh, y a une grosse différence entre compétitionner local, provincial. Et là, arriver sur la scène internationale, tout à coup, tu représentes ton pays. Uh, C'est vraiment un sentiment qui est différent. Donc, je me suis adaptée rapidement, puis euh, j'ai eu des très bons résultats qui m'ont permis de me, me qualifier pour les Jeux. Nous aussi, avant les Jeux, ça a été difficile. Sûr que nous, ce n'est pas un sport d'équipe, mais encore une fois, l'hôtel, euh, euh, test COVID tous les matins et tout. Mais je pense que ça, pour être un athlète de haut niveau, il faut avoir une grande capacité d'adaptation. Puis, euh, on l'a utilisé, <rire> on s'est adapté. Puis, euh, on est super fiers de, de cette médaille euh, en équipe-là, parce que ça va tellement aider la communauté éducative acrobatique euh, au Canada. Euh, en saut, ça faisait vraiment longtemps qu'on avait eu des résultats comme ça euh, aux Jeux olympiques. Donc, euh, on était vraiment fiers de notre accomplissement. Avec raison. Bravo.
Pascal, mais... veux-tu nous parler de la COVID pour toi? Comment ça s'est passé, votre équipe, là, quand même, toute une équipe? Oui, c'est sûr, c'est une grosse équipe. Euh... On a, eu, on a eu la chance de faire quelques camps d'entraînement. On est allé à, à Halifax, par exemple, euh, deux semaines. Puis là, c'était vraiment s'habituer à vivre dans notre chambre d'hôtel. Fait que vraiment, on restait dans notre chambre d'hôtel, on allait à, à l'aréna pour s'entraîner, on revenait, on recevait tous nos repas à la chambre d'hôtel parce que vraiment, on ne savait pas à quoi s'attendre rendu aux Jeux olympiques. Finalement, ça a été vraiment mieux que prévu. Moi, j'avais plus l'impression que c'était comme il y a quatre ans, mais avec des masques. Fait que on avait quand même la liberté, mais... Euh, non, c'est ça. On a fait plusieurs choses comme ça. Euh, on a aussi, on, presque toute l'équipe a eu la COVID euh, à, à Noël passé. Fait que, euh, ça a été quand même une, une période beaucoup stressante parce qu'on ne savait pas si on allait avoir les tests, euh, les tests négatifs à temps pour partir. Fait que vraiment, toute l'équipe, on, on était super stressés. On passait des tests à tous les jours. Il euh, fallait, fallait un petit peu construire un, un dossier médical justement pour euh, pouvoir partir pour la Chine. Fait que vraiment, ça a, été, ça a été une période stressante, mais... C est, c est ça. Les, les, les athlètes, on, on, est, on est quand même habitués à, à gérer à, à, des, des choses comme ça. Puis vraiment, euh, euh, on a juste, il faut juste focuser sur, sur ce qu'on sait faire, ça c'est patiner, c'est s'entraîner. Puis je pense que tout le monde, tout le monde a bien fait. Et quand même. Ouais. <rire> Merci beaucoup. Euh, moi, je vais commencer peut-être par ici, par Marion. Euh, juste une question, c'est vous, vous vivez une expérience qui est très, euh, très inspirante, très très riche. Euh, en, en, en enseignement, en performance, etc. Et moi, j'aimerais savoir, en, en fait, quand on vit une expérience comme ça, on tire des leçons. Donc, ma question pour vous, quelles sont les leçons que vous pouvez partager avec nous, que vous tirez de cette expérience qui est très, très riche et très, très intense, euh, qui est une expérience qui est aussi inspirante pour nous Quelles leçons vous avez appris, par exemple C'est une très bonne question. <rire> euh... En fait, moi, la, la leçon principale de mes Jeux, ça a été que je performe mieux quand j'ai du plaisir. <rire> Parce que je dirais que le mois avant les Jeux était tellement stressant à cause de la COVID, à cause de la pression médiatique que je n'étais pas euh, habituée d'avoir. On est un sport amateur, beaucoup de pression ben, d'attention médiatique une fois ou quatre ans. Moi, je n'avais jamais vécu ça avant. Donc, il y a des interviews tous les jours, tout le temps. Comment va ta préparation? Qu'est-ce que c'est quoi tes attentes? Euh, Veux-tu une médaille? Je dis, ben oui, je veux une médaille. Mais comme... <rire> <rire> C'était euh, vraiment difficile à gérer, puis euh, j'avais de la misère à l'entraînement à cause de ça, mes, per mes performances diminuaient vraiment. Donc, euh, avant les Jeux, ça a tellement été stressant que quand je suis arrivée aux Jeux, j'ai été obligée de prendre un pas de recul, me dire « je veux apprécier l'expérience, puis c'est unique, puis j'ai la, la chance d'être là, donc euh, je veux l'apprécier, puis euh, j'ai décidé d'avoir du plaisir, puis de juste montrer qu qu'est-ce qu que je suis capable de faire au lieu d'avoir peur de faire une mauvaise performance. » Ça a totalement changé mon expérience de vraiment juste, je vise le meilleur saut possible au lieu d'avoir peur de l'échec. Puis euh, c'est comme, c'est la leçon numéro un que je tire de mes jeux, c'est vraiment ça, c'est que quand j'ai du plaisir, je saute mieux, puis euh, ça fait des meilleures expériences pour tout le monde, en fait. Merci beaucoup, merci. Anton? Um, I, I would say the main thing I, I learned from the games was uh, just how to manage stress. Uh, there was a lot of stress, as, as she said, a lot of stress leading into the games the month before we were... We were in the hotel for 28 days and um, just learning techniques, right? Because for our sport, uh, they didn't select the team until two weeks or three weeks before going. So there was a lot of stress involved with that, knowing if you were going to be there, if you were not, and then you had to be prepared. If you were going, you had to be prepared to be to perform at your best. So there was just managing different skills, learning skills and managing managing stress and also managing your time because I... Uh, I decided to take one class this sem last semester. I, I have my final exam on the 29th Friday. <laughs> and um, just, you know, I had two practices a day, so the big thing was for me was like finding a routine where I get back and I can reset a little bit. Like I sit and read a book or something, and then I put two hours into my homework before or after supper. So it was, it was managing my time and, and being self-sufficient in that environment and being able to perform when we're in hotel and and as we said like we had our, our meals delivered to the door so it was really your own you're in your own bubble and you got to manage yourself and do everything you have to do to make sure that you're ready for the next practices and make sure that you're on the team and when you get to the games you're performing at your best thank you Anton. thank you pascal je dirais que ça ressemble un petit peu comme marion euh, moi ce que ce qui a fait que j'ai performé cette année c'est vraiment que je focusais plus sur avoir du plaisir aimer ce que je fais et euh, je dirais que dans les deux dernières années, vraiment, j'ai essayé de, 
de trouver un équilibre de vie qui fait que j'ai du plaisir à m'entraîner, mais aussi que je fais autre chose qui, qui fait que je me concentre pas juste sur ça quand je suis, quand je suis pas à l'aréna. Euh, J'essaie tout le temps de faire des choses, justement, aller à l'école, pour moi, c'est quelque chose qui, qui est tellement important et qui m'aide à garder un, un bon équilibre de vie. Mais aussi, j'essaie de voir des amis à l'extérieur du patin, j'essaie de faire d'autres sports, justement, un peu me changer les idées pour que quand j'arrive à, à l'aréna, j'ai hâte de patiner, je suis content d'être là, je m'entraînais plus fort que jamais, puis euh, ça a vraiment payé. Cette année, j'ai terminé premier au, au, au monde, euh, sur le 1000 sur le mètres. On a gagné une médaille. Merci. <rires> On a terminé premier au relais 5000 aux Jeux olympiques. Et il y a deux semaines, j'étais vice-champion du monde euh, aux distances individuelles. Fait vraiment, pour moi, j'étais quelqu'un qui était pas tant bon dans les distances individuelles avant. Et cette année, tout d'un coup, je me suis mis à, à performer. Puis je pense vraiment que c'est grâce à mon équilibre de vie. Puis aussi, j'avais vraiment du plaisir à m'entraîner. Puis ça enlève justement toute la pression, comme Marion disait. Fait que pour moi, c'est ça que je retiens le plus. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, you mentioned school. <laughs> It's the exams period right now. You talked about the stress management. I think we, we heard you well on this. But how do you manage? Because it's amazing what you've done, and the president mentioned that too. You're an Olympian. You're going to school during COVID. <laughs> That's the top, right? <laughs> it's like, uh, what a combination. But how do you manage school? Anton mentioned that you're taking one class. But in regular time, you still need to practice, get trained, and all that. So how do you manage your time, and how is Concordia helping you to do this? Um, For me, it's, um, I'm very glad to be at Concordia because all the teachers are, are so open-minded. You know, when I leave um, for competition, I just send her like the papers. I say, okay, I'm, I'm leaving like from this date to this date, and they always they're just always always happy like to to make me another schedule and make me redo the exam when I come back. So it's very nice for for that reason. And for me to to manage my, my stress, it's all about Um, having small objectives. You know, I, I never think about the, the whole pie, you know. I, I don't think about, okay, this, this exam is this day. Like, this day I have to, t to study all those pages. You know, I just think about, okay, this, this week I'll do, like, two of these chapters and then the other weeks. So I, I'll, I'll just set, like, have a schedule and I just try to have little objectives that are manageable. And when I, when I do that, it's easier to... Um, Um, to manage my time, to yeah, to manage my time, and yeah, that's I think that's how I make it when I'm in competition. I'm not stressed about oh, I have to to read like 200 pages in a week, you know, because I did all those all those things be, before to go to competitions. Is come 308 more difficult than the Olympics? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes yes, you know. <laughs> it's different. It's different. Um, I think uh, one thing that, that I've taken from the Paralympics and, and from, from my, my practicing with the team and being on the national team is that uh, we do a lot of visualization and meditation and, and breathing. That's kind of how we, we re rehearse for our games and we, uh, we get ready for, for big games, gold medal games. So I have a, I have a bit of a routine like the night before. I, I visualize a few things and I kind of set small goals, just a few key points, no matter who, who the competition is, no matter who we're playing, I, I kind of, I want to play my style of game. So I, I have a few, few key points that I stick to and I have some visualization and we have like a routine that way. And, and when you stick to a routine, it kind of helps you, right? When, when, you're, when I'm studying, I kind of set up a, a, a good environment where I can have a routine and I can, uh, like say I play, you know, a certain playlist or certain something that I like to listen to like I always put my headphones in I have earplugs in and like I have a, a routine for studying I think that that helps me a lot and I found that pretty helpful for, for managing the stress in, in exams and in the Paralympics I think for me the most important time, part was to know my limits because I really have a tendency to overwork myself and be like I'm going to study all day for that exam but I just can't when I'm doing World Cups or training for the games so I just try to get to know myself and what is my limit and okay if I can do like that like three hours a day let's say where can I realistically do it in my day and when is it going to be productive because I could try to do homeworks after jumping I've tried <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but it doesn't work. My brain is just out. And like, it's just wa a waste of time and it's just adding stress because I don't understand and I don't want to do more. So I get to know myself, get to know where can I work and be productive and then and I, and identify those times and be disciplined with those times. So I really plan ahead a lot and know if I need to do like 10 hours of studying or whatever project is going to be that amount of time, where can I put it in my week? And then I just stick to that plan because I've made the mistake before to overwork myself and sometimes my coaches, my coach had to come see me and be like, Marion, stop studying. Like, this is stupid. And I was like, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> because I could do, would just do too much. And I think it's an ongoing process too, to get to know that and to get to know what can I do with what I can't. But as I get to know myself, I get better and better. And I think it's been working pretty well for now uh, with my courses. So I'm happy about the uh, management. And as Pascal said, the teachers are awesome. <laughs> I really had uh, great accommodations, which is essential because I can work hard. But if, I mean, I had an exam on the day of world championships last year, like on the exact day. So if my teacher was not uh, open-minded about it, I just would not have done my semester. I would have failed my class. So it's very important, and I'm very grateful for Concord F to have open-minded teachers that are ready to accommodate me. <laughs> Good. That's good to hear. And as I listen to you, we're talking about time management, but it's also managing your energy, right? It's like when mm -hmm. I'm low, when I'm high, and so on. would like to keep you longer and longer and longer, but uh, we have, uh, you mentioned that you have two Gina Cody students and one JMSD <laughs> student, but we managed to balance things out, and we have someone else in the room with us, who's also a JMSB graduate, but also an Olympian, Alexandre Bilodeau. Come on. Hi, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be here and honoring our, our athletes, our hero of the day um, this year in, in Beijing. Um, it's athletes like fuel their lives on objectives and it's so inspiring to see you guys going after your objectives in sport um, not only for the kids that are out there in Quebec and inspired by doing your sport but but also for the, your fellow students and and never underestimate that it's it, it's actually uh, very inspiring to to see and I I remember going through uh, what you guys are going through right now and uh, having to study after after jumping or after it's a lot trust me it's a lot easier to open a Netflix uh, 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 episode than 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 reading an accounting book uh, when I was here but um, it it I think it's it's a mandatory uh, process it's inspiring to see that there's more and more athletes like you guys um, doing it it's super important um, your your career will be so long and you have your life is going to be twice, three times longer, um, and and that you guys are building that um, that that next passion that you you're actually building a passion now, um, and it's not something that comes right away. And sometimes we hear athletes, oh, I'll see I'll see about my studies when I actually finish my career, and we'll see where it goes. You can't find a passion like this. Um, you have it, it's it's a process. You build it through. Um, and 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 it takes time. And now you guys are forging it. Uh, and as as time goes, um, you're forging great great values, great abilities. That uh, uh, hearing you talk, uh, I I just see all these abilities that you've developed as stress management and everything uh, that I use in my everyday life. Um, and I've after writing my CPA exam um, in, in, in 2016, 17, can't remember. Oh, I'm too old. But uh, it's like people were uh, asking me, hey, Alex, you must have not been at all like stressed. I'm like, no, <laughs> I was stressed. Like, but you, you were like, you were on top of the Olympic course. And so for you, it's not, it's nothing. I'm like, no, stress comes in when you give meaning to what you do. And you guys are giving meaning to what you do today obviously in sport and you'll uh, and to see your passion you'll be giving meeting to what you do next um, and it's going to define the rest of your life so uh, for me I was as stressed and trust me I used the same tricks that that I developed uh, throughout my career in, 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 in Vancouver the night before I called my coach uh, oh, I called my sports psychologist and I was freaking out couldn't sleep it was 1, 1 a.m. and my sports psychologist obviously was like what the hell are you doing like you're competing the next day 
he comes to my room and he, uh, we start we start talking. I couldn't sleep. My hamster was just running. I was super stressed. And he gives me a pen, a piece of paper, and and uh, a pen, and he says, "I'll ask you questions. Write it, write it down." Um, and so I did. He says, "Like, are you healthy?" I'm like, "Yeah, write it down." Uh, are you are you are you in good physical shape? I'm like in the best shape of my life. Okay, write it down. So and we talked about like multiple technical points on the hill and everything. He says, and we had about like a two page or forty points, and he said, read that again and say that you're not ready for tomorrow. I'm like, so true. <laughs> I'm so ready for tomorrow. I can't have done more. And it's the exact same way I prepared for my for my CPA exam. I did my list <laughs> of bullet points, and instead, of all the other students were like in the car and reading like all their norms, their accounting norms, their <laughs> fiscal uh, rules, and I was like just reading my bullet points. And I just knew I I, I I've done the work. And you guys, those are the old things that you were developed in sport that will serve you for the rest of your life. I still do it now in my in front before my investment committee uh, when I work. So don't underestimate that. And um, last thing, uh, I think that even though some of you have evolved in, in, in individual sport, um, nothing happened alone. You have a great team around you. Um, and and uh, I was in individual sport, and I can't say that. Uh, unfortunately, I was the only one receiving a medal that day, but there's a whole team. And, and you guys selected a great university on your team. And it's, and, and, to the deans, never underestimate the impact that you have to allow them to uh, live their passion to the end. You guys are doing a great job, but keep doing it. We need more athletes that are actually building their future careers also at the same time. So thank you very much, and congrats again. Yes, thank you. Merci beaucoup, Alexandre, pour ce message uh, inspirant. Um, uh, actually, the reason why we get together today is to uh, uh, celebrate in person uh, the major achievements of our athletes. And now uh, I'd like to uh, invite our president uh, to join us on the stage uh, to present uh, some token in, in recognition of the achievements of our athletes. Concordia gold medals. <laughs> <laughs> There's only three of them. Wow. <laughs> Encore une fois, félicitations et bravo. C est, c est, on est très très fiers de, de vos accomplissements. Without any further ado, uh, I, I invite you now to take a few moments to say hi, take some uh, photos. Uh, with our uh, stars and enjoy the remainder of uh, the celebration. I'd like to thank as well uh, the uh, university team at Advancement for organizing this uh, wonderful event and thank you so much to all of you for joining us today. Thank you.